All right, welcome to my shop. I got a few things going on in here. There's the 1980 incubator that's been restored. A bunch of boards that are going to become picture frames. A bow that I'm setting up for my nine-year-old. Charcuterie boards that I just never finished. Oh, looks so good. And the RO, or reverse osmosis system for concentrating maple sap. This is the first year we're gonna use the reverse osmosis on the maple sap before we boil. Now, I have about 20 hours into this product so far. I'm pretty confident I have it figured out, or at least mostly figured out. After we boil this for a year, we'll find out how right I am. Um, but yeah, check it out. All right, so I'm gonna do a little how-to on how everything works, what the controls do, and just an overview of what I built. So this is the unit. It's all stored together. I have all the hoses and everything looped on top. I have a little canister even for spare parts and accessories. So uh, let's get into it. So on this container, which I mounted to the assembly, I have some parts. First thing is a screen, filter screen. And I also have some spare connectors, cleaning supplies in here just so I can keep everything on board the unit and I don't have to go looking for stuff at the beginning or end of season. So I have onboard storage right here for the filter wrench, that's the five micron pre-filter, and a weight. So this weight with the filter screen are gonna go into our sap tank. I just have water here for now, but just give you an idea how it works push to connect fitting. This is just a piece of steel that will take it right to the bottom of the tank. This container, we'll pretend this will be our sap container. And here's how it goes. It will go through the machine here and then through this valve, which we'll open. From there, it'll go to the pump. The pump will push it up through the filter. This is the five micron pre-filter that'll take out any gunk that the filter screen missed or anything too small. From there, we got a T. First spot goes to a pressure gauge that will um, become useful later. And then it goes up through here to our membranes. So it will go through three membranes and the way these are arranged are in series. So, Water will go through and out the bottom. The concentrate will go up and get recycled each time, concentrating it a little bit more every loop. And then from there, we'll open that up. It will go through this tube. That is purified water or permeate. The other tube will go through here and you can see there is a splitter. I'll show you what that's for. That is our concentrate. Concentrate comes back through here and there is a needle valve. How open or closed this valve is will change the pressure. The higher the pressure, the more permeate, the more water is removed. From here, we have another Y. So what this first one does is there is a valve right here. This is a bypass valve. This valve will bypass the needle valve. So if I need to flush the membranes, I don't have to lose my settings. Um, from there, you'll see uh, the discharge for the concentrate, as well as another needle valve. This needle valve is for recirculation. So I can recirculate a portion of the concentrate. And I will show you how all that works next. Now to get started, I want low pressure because I need this pump to pull the water out of the tank or the bucket in this case. So what I'm gonna do is open up the bypass valve. So I have our intake and our bypass, they're wide open. So there's as low a pressure as possible and we're gonna turn the pump on. All right, needle's going up, we have pressure built. Now it's charged and I can shut the bypass valve. Now this needle valve 
will set the ratio of permeate and concentrate through the filters. So as I close it down, you'll see the pressure will start to climb. I know from before, if I'm around 85 PSI, I should be coming out at one to one ratio of concentrate to permeate. I want to check that now. at about 90 PSI. So the first step was to time how much it took to filter or push 1000 milliliters permeate and concentrate. And I measured each of those here, 33.8 seconds and 31.14 seconds. Using those numbers, I could come up with a factor for concentration. That means at the current setting, I was concentrating it 1.94 times the original concentration of sugar. Next, I got the gallon per hour, which is 59.24. And then I went through and did a recirculation run. With the recirculation valve wide open, I was able to create uh, 1,000 milliliters of concentrate in 59 seconds, meaning that 0.47 was recirculated. So 47% of the first pass concentrate was recirculated through for a second pass. Now I can put those numbers into the spreadsheet and I'm able to find that, so 1.94 was my first concentration. I recirculated 47%, final concentration coming out is 2.77 times that of the original, making my recovery 64%, or I removed 64% of the water using this RO setup. Going down to my chart, you can see I have different pressures. I expect the membranes to clog with use, and as they clog, I expect the pressure to go up. So as the pressure climbs, the flow will decrease and I will be able to figure out roughly at about what pressure I need to shut down and flush the system. So there you go, here's a quick recap. So 59 gallons can flow over the membranes, but because recirculation pushes back 14.34 um, gallons every hour, that means 44.86 gallons of sap can be concentrated. It's concentrated into 16.17 gallons. And then the last column here, I, have, I can change the settings on to make whatever I want, but right now it's set up to give the time it takes to produce 1,000 milliliters of final concentrate. And I can change that 1,000 to whatever number I want. During the season, after doing a batch, uh, say it's gonna be a week before I wanna go again, I will use 15 gallons of permeate, so that's that pure water, saved up, and I'm gonna flush the system. To flush this, all I have to do is open up this valve. That acts as a bypass. It bypasses the needle valve, and I get great flow, and that will wash the membranes for 15 gallons. After that 15 gallons, I will come back with one bucket of five gallon pure water. I will put all the hoses into that bucket, and I'll use that to wash the system for 15 minutes. At that point, I will shut it down. And let me show you how I will shut it down. After that 15 minutes, I'm going to mix up some of this preservative for membrane flushing. Probably about two gallons, maybe three gallons because of the size of the system. And I will circulate that through here. Uh, make sure everything is saturated with it. And then at that point, let the pump run dry come back with another bucket of water and just pump enough of that water through so it starts to circulate and then I'll seal the system up for the season. To do that, I have some valves. First off, I'm gonna close the bypass valve. I'm gonna close the intake valve, which is already closed here. And then I'm gonna close this valve, which is the concentrate flow 
and there's one more valve that is the permeate and I will close this. So if you remember, there are three lines to the uh, membranes. There's the inline, and then the concentrate and the permeate. So on each of those three lines, I have a shutoff valve and it's been closed, making this a sealed system so no oxygen can get in. It will be preserved until the next season. Kept in the basement, probably at like 55 degrees, 50 degrees. And uh, when next season comes around, I'll flush everything with clean water and be ready to go. All right, one last look at it before I put it away um, for a month. You can see some of my design decisions. The platform is treated. I rounded everything over to make it smooth and no sharp edges. There's a stainless threaded rod through here to hold the board on, as well as some treated deck screws to hold it together. So that makes a nice platform. The plywood and all the solid wood has been sealed with polyurethane. And I made a handle removable, although looking at it, it's probably gonna stay on there and never come off because it's just convenient to wrap the hoses on the top. The power supply is tethered in here. Um, it's held in firm. There's some rubber shims to keep it from vibrating. The uh, motor puts out quite a bit of vibration through this tube. So to combat that, there's a foam insulator here that is secured and that absorbs a lot of the vibration and that's just to keep it from slapping and possibly rubbing a hole or something in it. The power supply, I put an inline switch on, uh, which was tricky because I didn't realize this cord had a ground wire and the switch is only for two wires, but it can be done if you know how to solder. But that's the on-off switch. That works real handy, real, real slick. Other than that, um, I decided to tilt this guy upwards. So if you're adjusting it like this, looking at the pressure, it's easy to see. You don't have to kneel down. And again, most of these things are pretty much this is the only one you really need to play with. Everything else, like the recirculator valve, I have a feeling that's gonna be left wide open. These are either on or off, but yeah, this is the only one that needs to be adjusted up top, that one, and you use the pressure gauge to do that. All right, other side. <clears throat> the holder is snug and uh, it's hard to see on here, but there's even little notches for the ribs on this, so these guys are snug and don't twist but that's a real nice fit on there and it's going to be outside and who knows what there are some feet on there if it will focus so yeah some little rubber feet on the bottom as well so doing my best to combat vibration and keep things from falling apart oh yeah and uh back here those are um there's two nuts jam nuts holding that together so that doesn't vibrate off so here's a full parts list of everything used. You can go ahead and pause it, take a screen capture, whatever you want. I just wanna share this just in case anyone's wondering what that part is or where I got it. Here you go. And also, there's the total cost. 483.88 to the penny. Thanks for checking out the video. I will do my best to put up a video showing how it worked this year in a fairly timely fashion. Maybe. If I don't get distracted or busy otherwise with something else. <laughs>